Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Corpse Party Book of Shadows. So now what we're doing is we are we're playing as the teacher still and we have to hide from a person that is we called for and we don't think it's a janitor, we think it's some some monster. So we want to choose the teacher's podium. I hurried and hid myself beneath the teacher's podium. I grabbed my I grabbed my knees and curled up and made myself as small as I could. What is it? What's happening? You is a teacher that they have in the future. So let's see what goes on. The footsteps continue to draw nearer and nearer. Clomp, 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 clomp. Little by little, the sound grew louder. Every hair in my body was standing on end. Please just pass by, please. I held my breath, clasped my hands together, and silently prayed. Clomp, clomp, clomp. They were close now. Very close. Please, God! Why is this happening? I couldn't make any sense of it. I just wanted to get over with. I prayed to God that it would end. Was this about... Was this what the old woman was trying to warn me about? Was this all happening because I ignored her? Because I didn't take the paper doll from her? Was it because I'd hid... I heard the ghost story from Yoshi and allowed it to get to me? Or did it... The strange events of that day have nothing to do with what was happening to me now? I feel like my heart is going to burst out of my chest. Bum, 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 bum. I was still holding my breath. I didn't dare let even the tiniest of sounds escape and give away my position. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, 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 tap. 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 <laughs> the constant, uh, consistent rhythm of the footsteps suddenly ended halfway into one of its cycles. Huh? And it ended right in front of this very classroom. Oh! It's a ghost. Yes! I had goosebumps up and down my arms and legs. My mouth, where I stopped praying and clasped my hands over my mouth. I knew I'd scream if I didn't. Could this be Yoshi? Was this a real, the school legend real? <laughs> All I could do was close my eyes, keep my mouth shut, and hope whoever and whatever this was would just go away. But the footsteps sounds didn't start again. If this was indeed Yoshi, then she'd stopped in front of the classroom and was just standing there. I had no concept of time now. Anymore. I was standing and hiding in the spot for what was possibly a few minutes, but it felt like at least an hour. Maybe whoever it was is gone. Oh! I decided to carefully peek out of the podium and gingerly edge my head out of the, far enough to get a glimpse of the room when suddenly <laughs> the footsteps rang out once more it sounded like they were headed right for me and they might have been inside the room I honestly couldn't tell I scrambled back to get to my hiding spot and covered my mouth with both my hands pant 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 this was too much for me my breathing was coarse erratic and my face was a mess of tears and snot god please save me I was inconsolable the footsteps just wouldn't stop what on earth were they doing? I almost, it almost seemed like they were running around in circles just to scare me. Please stop it. Please! I mouthed out these words over and over again, and I moved my hands to my ears in vain to attempt to block out the t torturous sounds. And as if in response, the sound changed. Eek! It was a loud, dull thud, followed by silence. No more footsteps. I'd heard of the sound hundreds of times before. It was the classroom door sliding open. I peeked out, but the door was still tightly shut. How could that be? If the sound I heard wasn't the door, then what was it? Pant pant! What little safety I'd felt here was pretty much gone. But to be fair, I wasn't absolutely certain the spirit had seen or heard me either. The prospect of stepping out of the into the open wasn't a desirable one, but I had to decide if it was a, if it was better to stay where I was or to make a break for it. Okay, so I have a walkthrough. So let's see what we've got to do. We're gonna choose to make a break for it. So, boom, let's do it. Staying in one place for too long seemed to be inviting trouble. So I took a deep breath and reluctantly crawled out as quietly as I could. But almost immediately, I felt something. Woo, woo, heard. Something long and thin had struck me in the back of my head. Or perhaps struck isn't the right word. There was to seem a little more force behind it, but it wasn't a hard slam, more like someone trying to get my attention. Is that a wooden rod? No. 
It's a finger? I knew I wouldn't like what was going on to see, but I had to face whatever was going on, so I turned around, and there, looking over, looming over me was... Is someone there? Woo! Go home, child. A figure was peering down at me from above the podium with one emancipated wishbone-like finger extended towards my face. I recognized this person instantly. No doubt about it. This was the strange old woman who supposedly passed away earlier. Blah! I was scared out of my mind. I tumbled the rest of the way out into under the podium and shot to my feet. Pant, pant, pant. A ghost. There was really a ghost in the school. My breathing was ragged, rag, ragged, and my heart was pounding so hard I thought it could explode. Plowing through all the desks in my way, I ran as fast as I could towards the classroom door, but that was as far as I could go. What's wrong? There, in the open doorway, was the same old woman emitting a bluish-white glow. There was a source of the light I'd seen through the window earlier, but how in the world did she get through the door before I did? Can't we pan pan? I felt like I was starting to hyperventilate and try to do my best as I could to calm my breathing as my eyes darted around the room. I needed to get out of here now to get away as uh, far away from this place as I possibly could. If the front door is blocked, maybe I could get through the back. But if I do that, I can't leave the school without running right past her. There's no way I let she let me by, but I have to do something. I bit my lip and continued standing in the room. Something, if I just had something I could use to fight back. I didn't have any time to think about it carefully. I just had to grab something and hope for the best. There are two choices. I had to choose. I had to pick one on impulse before it was too late. Bag assault. It was bag assault. I remember seeing it. Bag assault. Bag assault. And then break the glass. Okay. This looks like whatever salt is an old chemistry experiment. I had heard that the salt was used to purification rituals, so it seemed like a natural choice. Okay, this is coming with me. Place the salt in my pocket as a sort of protective charm. Boom. I'm scared, but well, here goes nothing. When I looked over, the spear of the old woman was holding out her hand from the other side of the door frame. She was really trying to catch me. I wasn't just being paranoid, she was going to kill me and turn me into a ghost just like her. I was convinced that this had to be Yoshi. The teacher from that urban legend. No, I won't let her get me. Bracing myself, I darted towards the door to the back end of the classroom. There wasn't a moment to lose. If I didn't act fast, I probably wouldn't be able to act at all. I threw the door open and just began running at top speed, hoping to escape behind the spirit's back. Unsurprisingly, trying to outrun a ghost proved to be a fruitless endeavor. The spirit saw me and moved at breakneck speed to intercept. Ah! <laughs> Don't come any closer! I thrust my hand into my pockets and withdrew the bag of salt, then threw the entire thing directly at the old woman's face. Alright, so I'm going to save, but just so you guys know, I have a walkthrough, and what they tell me to do is to choose to break the glass while choosing to run somewhere else. You can also allow to reach the true end. You'll First, be presented with another choice where you can choose either reach out a hand or pray upon the pray upon the pencil. The former, the the former, while while you emerge, you will the main route will couple lines of dialogue, while the latter option will get you the wrong end five. So we want to choose run somewhere else. All right, allow you to reach the true end. All right, so break the glass and then. Run somewhere else. Right? Run somewhere else. Okay. Yeah! She recorded. That was my chance. I ran down the hall as fast as my legs would carry me, briefly glancing over my shoulders after a moment to calm to confirm the spirit was still withering. Who did that? I just kept running down the dark hallway with nothing but adrenaline and moral fear to keep me going. I reached the stairwell at the end of the hall and made a mad dash towards the ground level. I was determined to get out of this building alive. Stop! Finally, still moving at top speed, I reached the window door le leading outside. Almost there, I'm almost out. Luckily, the malevolent spirit hadn't caught up to me yet. It actually seemed like I might be able to escape. I might actually survive this. <sighs> I made it. I grabbed the handle and tried pulling it. 
Who? Uh? No, it's not opening. Why? Why is I'm so close? Please, please open. I'm begging you. I have to think of something else. I'm just right. The horrible woman's going to. No, I can't let that happen. But what do I do? What do I do? Uh. Oh, fuck. Okay. What do I choose? It says choose break the glass. All right. So choose break the glass. Oh, hey. Putting my thoughts in order, I came to a sudden realization that right under the umbrella racks, unless the spear had taken something, I'd put an umbrella should be right on, right here where I'd left it. Oh, here it is! I practically tackled the rack, grabbing my umbrella with one swift motion, not from the handle, mind you, but from the top. With the taking aim in the glass part of the door, I swung as hard as I could, smacking dead center with the sturdiest plastic handle. Ugh! The glass wasn't going to break so easily, of course, but it did crack, giving me an impetus. I needed to go in for a second hit. Break, damn it! Break! Again and again, I struck the glass. I had the umbrella grip so tightly that the metal skeleton of the canopy was leaving indentations on my skin. I was sure there had to be a better way to do this, but I didn't want to have the luxury of time to figure out what I have been. Stop! You must not leave! She's coming this way! Ah, wheeze! I began smacking the glass even harder, even faster. My hands were killing me, but this is the only hope of survival. Finally, after too much effort, I did it. The glass shattered into the ground, not the floor, making one hell of a sound. Tepid air whooshed into the outside. It was still pouring rain, but I was free now. Free to escape this hell hole. Pant. Okay. The pain. I had broken was on the lower half of the door and I didn't care if I cut myself I got down on my knees and I crawled like mad I did it I'm almost outside I can actually escape I'm safe I felt triumphant for a brief moment the fear was gone and I was basking in my victory over this malevolent entity huh but it didn't last long before I was even halfway through the door I felt something coiling itself around my arm with a start I looked back Oh fuck! What the shit? You mustn't go outside. <laughs> a tall, shadowy figure had appeared behind me in the entranceway, and she had got me in her grasp. There wasn't much more to her than her indistinctive, flickering silhouette, but I could clearly see it had a broken neck. Was this a different apparition? Her scratchy, root-like fingers was squeezing my arm with tremendous force, pushing aside muscles and tissues and pressing right at the bone. No, who are you? Yoshi. Where are you going, my dear? I'll just be a little longer, so won't you be... Won't you please wait for me? Oh, that hurts. That really hurts. I was shaking hysterically, and tears were streaming down my face. I was absolutely convinced that I was going to die here. Let go of me. Sachi. I could offer no resistance. She was too strong. All I could do was plead with her. Please stop. You're, you're really hurting me. I felt like my arm would snap in two at any moment. Let's be together forever. She wasn't just grabbing me, but twisting as well. The pain was like un unlike anything I've ever experienced before. I couldn't think about anything else. My mind was absorbed by the unconscious agony. <laughs> Sushido. What? Tsutsaka. I thought my arm was about to snap off, then all of a sudden, I was whisked away. Whisked away by Tsukasa. Are you okay? What? Why? No time to explain. We have to run. What? Tsukasa was holding onto me tightly after saving me from the brink of death. He led me back to the school, back into the school at an incredible speed. Damn it! What the hell was that thing? Please tell me I'm just dreaming. He practically spit these words as he continued running. Why is Tsukasa here? I tried to match his grain, and once we were a bit more in sync, I looked up at his face. After we reached the end of the hall, he suddenly veered into the last classroom before the stairwell, pulling me in with him. Back at the classroom. Shishido, you okay? I'm fine. I I can walk by myself, really. Oh, sorry, my bad. I moved away from Tsukasa and almost immediately spilled into the ground like a house of cards. Whoa, whoa. You sure don't seem okay to me. Maybe not, but I just need a few, uh... Hey, don't push yourself. Tsukasa grabbed my arm and helped me up. Unfortunately, it was the arm Yoshi had been twisting. <laughs> Alright. But guys, that is the end of this episode. So, what a cliffhanger to end on. But that's it, guys. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And I'll see you guys.